Start with Joe. Uh, Joseph Tipolito, Greensboro News and Record. Bryce, um, I'd like to ask what problems that you have faced off the last names? Do you know? Keep going. Do you know? Hold up for a second. Let's get they're working on the mics here. Go ahead. Give it a try. Hello. Talk Hello. right into it. Hello. 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 I think it's good. You good? All right. Uh, well, I mean, all all players have bad games. I mean, I just had a few bad games. Uh, I'm going to just keep everything as normal as possible. I mean, I've been through stretches where I've had a few bad games and then I've had a few great games after that. So, I mean, I'm just not going to change anything. I mean, I've been shooting a little bit more with Coach Davis. And, I mean, just have to – And I, it's not an intimidation factor. I mean, I've been in big games before. I've been here for three years. So, I mean, we've been the stages a, lot, a little bit higher. I mean, the Duke game will probably be a, a little higher because, I mean, that's one of the greatest rivalries in sports. So, I mean, it's just – just a few bad games. I'm not going to hang my head over that. It's just, I just have to be able to put that behind me and just keep playing. We'll go right here in the second row, please. Uh, this question is for Marcus, uh, Nick Hamilton, examiner.com. Marcus, how imperative is it for you to kind of set the tone for tomorrow, especially against those Wisconsin guards? Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, we need to set the tone defensively with our pressure. Uh, you know, if you allow them to run their stuff, they're very good. So as my, it's my job as a point guard to pressure the ball and also attack them and do my best to get the tempo up. Uh, so I'm going to try to do that from the beginning of the game. Uh, so I guess it, it does start with me, and that's my job. So tomorrow I'm going to try to be really active early uh, just to try to get the tempo in our favor and get a little bit of transition going. All right, we're going to go right here. Go ahead. Zach Brazilla, New York Post. Marcus, how, how would you describe your season or – do you feel like you've exceeded expectations? Uh, I definitely haven't exceeded some expectations. <laughs> uh, there's a lot on me at the beginning of the year, and I put a lot of expectations on myself. Uh, you know, I got injured. I started off slow, and then I got hurt for a lot of the year. But, um, you know, I think I'm coming around at the right time, and, you know, our team is gelling together at the right time. So uh, I'm not too worried about, you know, what other people have said, uh, whether I have lived up or haven't lived up to what people have pegged me for this year. Uh, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to help this team right now, and I think I'm playing my best basketball of the year right now. So I'm, I'm not too, not too ha or upset. We're going back here in the fifth row. Yeah. Um, our chance, KWCHL, Chapel Hill. Bryce, um, when do you actually get the – final defensive strategy and uh, who's going to cover who. And uh, uh, You and Kennedy and Joel and, and Isaiah, are you joking amongst yourself about who's going to go out there and chase Frank all night? Uh, no, we don't joke around about it because, I mean, it's going to be a tough task to be able to do that. So, I mean, and we do get the final defensive assignments during pregame before every game. So, I mean, just have to – whoever's going to be chosen to do that, just have to be ready for it because, I mean, all of us are going to get a shot at – having to run around and chase him around. And, I mean, Nick, and with uh, Nigel Hayes, he's the same way. So, I mean, everybody's just have to be prepared. Have you practiced more zone this week than you have normally? No, we've been, we've been doing the, the same things we've been doing all year. I mean, we practice a little bit of zone, but, I mean, we've been mostly practicing man-to-man because -man that is our primary defense. And, I mean, we're going to try and stick to that. And if that's not working, then we'll go in the zone. We're going to have a follow-up. Zach, have a follow-up. And then we'll go up to Beth. Marcus, you, you talked about the expectations. Do you feel like th right now, where you are right now, how important is that for you, for your season, to kind of wait to maybe quiet those people? Well, yeah, I think, I think there is a difference. You know, it's pretty clear to see how I'm playing now that I'm healthy compared to how I was playing when I was dealing with that injury. But honestly, like, the, none of that matters at the moment. You know, when looking back in a couple months, you know, it'll be like, hey, I told you guys I could play, you know, something like that. But right now it's about what North Carolina has to do to prepare for Wisconsin. So that's probably at the very back of my mind or not even in my mind at all. Beth, go ahead. Beth Harris, AP. Marcus, uh, during the tournament, the timeouts are slightly longer than the regular season. And um, 
Just wondering, uh, do you guys ever catch yourselves kind of looking around or look, you know, what are you doing that whole time uh, in terms of, you know, coach said he doesn't really have that much material to talk to you guys for that long. So how do you handle it? Does it kill momentum at all at times during the game because they are a little bit longer? Yeah, it can. It just stops the flow of the game overall. You know, I think Jay Billis is the one always talking about. There's too many stoppages in, in college basketball. And the only time you really like get stuck is if there's like a timeout, and then the next dead ball is a media timeout, and we just talked. Uh, so then coach is like, hey, "Hey, there's only so much I can say to you. Just relax, catch your breath, and play." And then it's like three more minutes. Everyone's just sitting there. So there are some of those, uh, but usually, you know, they have a lot to say, and we talk X's and O's and stuff. But it is a little bit. It gets a little crazy sometimes if a team calls a timeout and then there's a media timeout or if the media timeouts get too close to each other. So uh, it is a lot of time, but I like it because I play a lot of minutes, so it's good rest. Tom, go ahead. Uh, Tom, <laughs> Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Marcus, growing up in the Midwest, did you uh, bump into Koenig and Decker and Kaminsky and guys like that in the summers, uh, in some of the summer regional tournaments? And has anything surprised you about what they've done at Wisconsin? Yeah, I mean, JP, my teammate, played with a couple of those guys uh, on an AAU team out of Wisconsin. We played them, it feels like, two or three times every summer. So uh, I've played basketball against a lot of their team or a lot of their team for years now. So to see what they've done is pretty pretty impressive, you know, going to the Final Four last year and, you know, making another run as, as a one seed this year, uh, especially Sam. You know, I've been playing against Sam for a long time because he's, he's been with JP. And to see him, you know, take off the way he has has been pretty impressive. Uh, I've, I've played against Bronson some. I don't really remember Frank Kaminsky, you know, in AAU circuit or anything. He's a little older, but I think, yeah, he's seen me. Yeah, he's a little older. But, uh, but, yeah, those guys, there's a lot of familiarity. Midwest teams, there's only so many of us, so we play against each other a lot. Okay, we're going to go in the back here, back on the left. Uh, Zach Miller, Rivals.com. Marcus, you, you played, I think, at, at the CP3 camp with, with Trayvon over the summer. First, do you expect him to play against you guys on Thursday? And what have you seen from him over the season that makes Wisconsin kind of a different team when he's out there? Uh, he's, he's a great player. You know, we, we became pretty good friends at CP3 camp. And I think he's friends with my sister because they went to school together uh, for a while. But he, he gives them an extra dimension that he likes to push the ball. You know, their team is kind of methodical in how they do things. Uh, they like the tempo at their pace. But, you know, when I watch them and he gets the ball, he kind of has that freedom to attack, uh, you know, full court and, and give him that full court, uh, you know, transition attack. Um, and I don't know if he's going to play. You know, he's missed a lot of games. Uh, you know, that's – I probably have the least amount of information on that of anybody. But uh, if he does play, you know, we're going to try to, you know, contain him because he's real good and crafty with the ball. Any further questions for the student athletes? Last call. All right, thank you, gentlemen.